2018년도 KT 로스터도 기대해 주셨으면 롤컵을 드는 거를 보기만 했었잖아요 롤컵에 세 번째로 올라갑니다 가장 높은 자리에서 진짜 제대로 통쾌하게 한번 복수한 것 같아요 안 모르는 팀 선포 선그 자체 이대로 무너지는 거 아닌가 뭐 이런 얘기까지 나왔었는데 One to look for here. To go ahead and take a look at the match history. Not great reading it's definitely for the good. side of Afrika. They win one game as they that often extra do. Extra power that balance numbers and oh. damage numbers. And it's going to find Spirit. Quite a bit of damage coming through. The let's bounce will come out, pushes him a bit closer there to Kuro. Being able to farm is advantage KT. I like the late game power of Afrika in team fights, but oh. KT and no slouches either. It's going to be the Event Horizon coming down. Score jumping straight in stopwatch there for Kuro to try to keep himself alive. He flashes to the side. Jumps over, but that is just going to be pawns. That's allowed him to get that Trinity Force completed already. So, you know, might actually find himself in an advantage over Keen, who is now going to jump on Score coming around the side. Gets done. Gets done. That's going to be the let's bounce. Well, right, it comes through, but no, actually, doesn't even come through as well. See that Cannonball Barrage just get thrown down to the bottom side. Spirit yet again. Going to be jumping in Elastic Slingshot. Comes through, looking for the grab. Gets the pull there on the bottom. Can't quite bring him back in. Let's bounce. Not going to be catching anything. Alive for the moment with Smeb is on the back here with Pawn Girls coming in. Emperor's Divide comes through, pushes them out. Smeb gets forced to use the flash, but now he's getting jumped on. The Sand Soldiers just soldiers just tripping away at him. Has the stopwatch, but nowhere else left to go. And Kuro will find the kill. Two to one here for Afrika. And Kramer game. Yet again going over to the Afrika Freaks. Keen now getting jumped on. Yes. This Megan R for a little bit longer. And Ball Barrage gonna come down. He's gonna get the transformation. Has a red buff to help Kite, but he's just stuck in underneath this turret. He's gonna get taken down. So KT finally able to put a terrible second. spot to be in. Now Drink getting ready to come through. That's gonna be Abyssal Voyage there from Tuzan and Kramer. Spirit and Kuro coming in from the top. Score's gonna jump away with the flash in, and Spirit's gonna find him. He goes down now. Smep, nowhere to run, nowhere to go. He's gonna get taken out as Kramer finds KT. He's only been up for a couple minutes here, Pawn. Can he get the magic W, throws it in. Not gonna be able to connect, and that's gonna be the Baron going over 22 minutes to the Afrika Freaks who are now starting to run away with this game. I was just singing KT phrases, keeping things close, and just like that, it has all unraveled. I mean, this early in the season, when it comes to scale, when it comes to team comp, there's so many things to consider. Because the control ward was down, Kramer Tusa made the educated opinion that it was gonna be them on Drake. This was great play by Spirit in particular. Got the first Q and then flashed into the second. Kuro confirming the second. Benefit either side. KT Snow a cleanse is down from Tucson. They know they can fish with the event horizon. Spirit can be one shot here. Yeah, he's gonna go ahead and stun up. Rock's he's coming through, and he is Tucson just damn bound now. Yeah, they do. Dragon gonna come down. Tucson in over onto the back of the pit. Baron going low. Seems like KT might be able to finish it Oh no! Spirit jumps in and he takes it out. The steelway coming through for a freak of freaks as they get their second Baron of the game score. Trying to eject himself from the fight. Jumps over the back side of the pit. He will stay alive. The ability no to get into the pit over and above. Gets them the Baron and resets the game. We're gonna see the replay right here. They think, okay, we're fine. Hello, says Spirit. Smites away. Unfortunately, score smite mechanics have never been his strong point. One HP. Very never. quickly taken apart because if two people die, they got massive death time as you steamroll down lane and you get at least an inhibitor. So they're trying to fight around objectives, but this is going to be a team fight. Let's bounce thrown down there by Spirit, but he's not going to find anything instead just jumps to the side. In the meantime, Smep getting chunked out by Kuro, who's just firing away with his hand soldiers. He's going to go for Massive Emperor's Divide knocks him back. Mana goes down. Pawn caught. Has the Sonya's up, but he's going to get taken out. A double kill going over to Kramer to start off the fight. Three members dead on the side of KT. Just score and Smep left alive. For how long they'll be able to keep saying that, I do not know. Keen trying to deal with the GP. Goes low, but the Devourer is there. Spirit leaping in from the sidelines. Tries to take him out, but Smeb does manage to get rid of the Nar here at the end. But with Kramer showing up, 
just a matter of time. He'll get popped. Well, stack Scored. is not really a big prize. It's not the sort of thing you covet for a team fight victory at 42 minutes into the game. So they get a single buff. They get a bit of map control. But this is not the game ending fight. It looked like when we saw that Emperor's Divide. Really weak consolation prize after nearly acing the enemy team. But yeah, beautiful engage coming through from Kuro. I mean, three people died. Two right off the bat. From the Kog'Maw, and then Kuro able to get Pawn right Good idea. What going on? They saw Spirit jump into the tent. Do. Pawn's going to try for it, but actually, Kuro will wonder how his miraculous engage hasn't won the game. For the side of Freaker oh, is up. Oh. Spirit, yeah, tries to leap out of there, but he is just going to get popped. He does nothing that a Freaker can do to try to keep him alive. Actually, no. Is this the right move? The TP is there. Looks like he'll be fine for the moment. Keep coming through. Kramer flashing Kramer. forward, just looking to melt down Pawn. Kinnaball Barrage coming Spirit through, but in. it's not going to deter them at all. That is going to be Pawn going down. Smep taken down on the sidelines of Kuro, finishing off score. Three members dead on the side of KT and Afrika. They might just look for the victory right here. They can go through the top. Azir is already there. They want to finish the game. Only wave clears of Tristana. Not going to be enough, you'd have to imagine. Going low, but he is still going to be okay. Sitting in that Megan R form, and you can see even with the Unbreakable there, Mana taking so much damage from Kramer, has to show so much respect that there's just nothing really that they can do. If he turns his attention onto them, they are gone in a matter of seconds, much like the base is right here. It took a while, Papa Smithy. 46 and a half minutes in the game. We've been live for over two hours, but that is game one going to the Afrika Freaks. Can they beat KT finally? 0% win rate in 2017, always goes to three games. Could this be the time to turn it around? Fascinating game one, despite the low kill score, because of the different scalings, we thought maybe the game was decided by score early in the game, not being able to pull off the turret dive on Nar and losing objectives, and then by score again, of course, in the smite war. When it came through, Spirit was able to steal it away. But the game reached parity in situations where it seemed like Afrika would run over the side after Kuro, rewriting his previous 17-game 30% win rate on Azir. His Azir play was probably the highlight of the game, yeah. but the highlight for the Afrika fans is once again they win a game one and against KT Rolster, <laughs> one of the favorites for the entire season. And they close it out. So a question that I have for you here, Papa Smithy, because I know that the people are probably losing their minds over this in the chat right now. Do we expect to see any swaps at all from the side of KT? So hard to say, Achilles. Yukal is too young to play. Obviously, you're giving him that look and wondering about Rush. There were some mistakes from Spirit here. Is Rush just a nominal member of the team, or is he a serious member who will actually be playing a lot of game time?